Botswana has a lot to thank National Geographic for. We, I think that um, from, from where I'm standing and from my government's position, we very much value the collaboration and the relationship that we have and we're building up and have built up over the last few years, particularly and going forward. I think that this is a, a relationship that will endure for, for, <coughs> for reasons that Gary will tell you, I, I, I think. But Gary... <laughs> share uh, not just uh, the pain that he and his team went through here uh, with folks like John who's here and a Johnny Custa as well, but you'll also share this hope that the human uh, through endurance can make a difference through a person or a team's determination to take on what seems to be an impossible task and to shine a light toward in a courageous way to make a difference in the world. So my head is off to, to you, Steve, for what you've done. Uh, it's our job to tell those stories. And I think Ambassador Newman, uh, it is, it's so proud of us to be able to highlight uh, this to our magazine this month. The issue is out on the, on the table out there. Please pick it up. You'll also find the, uh, all of the uh, instructions of how to find happiness in the world in there. Uh, somehow it's in Singapore. I don't know. Anyway. So, but it's in Botswana, and um, we hope that you will read this amazing journey of what Steve's been on and, and view this film. So, I'm going to just uh, turn it over now and uh, run the trailer, um, and then we will hear from Water, uh, our Botswana in residence, who will uh, be able to express how National Geographic has connected with him and the journey he has personally been on for the people of Botswana. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. And we work, we will work together for many years to come in concert to protect uh, the wildlife of this earth. Thank you. Thank you. Was made into our planet's 1000 UNESCO World Heritage Site, as you can see here. And this is a long overdue accolade for a wilderness beyond comparison. But it also made it about all of us, about the whole world. And in us, on, in our project, it made us look north. How do we make sure this World Heritage Site, this incredible wilderness, this incredible place, this life changing place, is protected and preserved for the next hundred years, the next thousand years in perpetuity. And that was the birth of the Okavango Wilderness Project. Now my first thing I needed to do, because I don't come from Botswana, I don't come from Namibia or Angola, I come from South Africa. My first thing to do was to find the ambassadors, sorry ambassador, the ambassadors of the Okavango Delta, the Waiyi people, the river bushmen, the men that, uh, and women that pulled the Makoros across the Okavango Delta, they were my mentors uh, from the moment I arrived there. And I had known water and brought him into the team and Khobonamang and Lelamang and Tom and KG. And we took them, the five of them, up to the source of the Quito, the source of the Okavango. This incredible unknown place, unexplored place, to meet the people of the river that really hold their faith in their hands, the shared faith. And uh, we struggled, as you'll see in the film in the beginning. Uh, Makoros were not designed to be pulled over land for 12 days. Uh, but we got into the river and we eventually found people. There was no one up there. It was just this abandoned landscape uh, due to the war, depopulated. And we eventually found people and hiked out to the village and met the Grand Sova, Sova in Hong. And uh, water got to interact with these people. And uh, on the walk back, we walked back to camp. He said to me, Steve, you know, the Okavango Delta wasn't like this 
like we know it when I was a child. Um, we didn't have as many, as many elephants. Uh, lions were scared of us. We were living, farming, burning, doing exactly what these people are doing. Um, he was there when the Miremi Game Reserve was born. <coughs> conservation began to blossom in Botswana. And he said, no, but we used to live in houses like this, homes like this. We had fish traps like that. We used to hunt the same way. This was our life. But now Water saw this uh, you know, safari hunting came and went. He worked for 14 years as a safari guide. He has an IFO, uh, land cruiser, a home, family, kids going to school. His life was revolutionized by tourism development, by conservation. And he said to me, those 40 years, those 40 years of my life, my adult life, were stolen from these people. This is a wonderland. This is connected to the Okavango Delta. This is the same. And that is our mission in the Okavango Wilderness Project, is to bring the magic of Botswana, the model that was formed in Botswana, to Angola. And um, this is the ambassador for that. He lived through it, experienced it. Um, he has taught me so much, inspired me to do the work that I do. And yes, he is the star of this film. Absolutely, there's no doubt. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, this evening. As you've heard, I'm water from the village of Jao. 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 It's a very small village, but I would like to talk about the journey from the village to here. We started the journey from the village to a very small airport in Maung, to Johannesburg. I'm not very, I'm, I don't fancy airplanes. Airplanes are the Luckily, I had a friend with me, Charles, and I told him, I want to get pills, sleeping pills, so I can sleep right through it. <laughs> I, and he laughed, and he laughed and said, uh, maybe I'll forget you, and, uh, <laughs> and you'll get lost in this new land. <laughs> Jiao village, it's a very small village and the people from this village do not even foresee any opportunity to leave the village and this is why I'm very thankful to God for this opportunity. Um, and this is why we're here. We came here to premiere this uh, film which I'm involved in, which is about the Okabanko Delta. And I'll tell you a little bit about it. Stevie, a 
kusinya hawa ni juu ni ba na baro na le ba na ba boni ba to ahite la kauro na umpe ni wona rutsila ka oni. So the Okavango Delta is a land abandoned with wildlife. It's it's very prestige, and the intention is what we want the people from this land is to make sure that this land remains the same for future generations. We believe that this is also the intention or the objective of the government and the people of Botswana. We also see this as a project that needed for us to engage with the Angola, with the government and people of Angola, who are the source of the Okavango Delta, so that we work together to make sure that this land or this pristine Okavango Delta can, you know, can stay the same for future generations. We believe that if we stand together, the people of Botswana and Angola, and protect this land, it will be able, we will protect it for future generations. Translation. <laughs> Um, and 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 you know he, he is just so grateful for, for, for this opportunity. He is um, grateful for what he sees of what this film and what this project represents for the future. And he is he just can't believe that he comes here and he's treated like He's the beneficent, but he comes here and everybody treats him like a president. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's just something for him which is very humbling and he's very grateful because he feels that from this village, he should be the one who is being thankful. <laughs> Um, it doesn't mean that um, it's only meant for women, even 
men can, can rock it, as you can see we have um, some gentlemen here wearing it. So we're not discriminatory when it comes to fashion. Um, each one of us is wearing something representing a certain event and or, uh, or culture to present. For instance, a young lady here, Lena, is a typical bride. So when she goes, uh, when the gentleman next to him asks for her hand in marriage, this is how she's supposed to work, how supposed to present herself. She has to cover up her head and she has to cover up her shoulders. If not, we send her back. <laughs> and then, and then Mr. Um, this here is the uncle. This is the guy, the go-to guy, if you want to find a bride in Botswana. So, you've got to be nice to him. My mom as well is representing the uncle. And Ma Asha, Ma Asha is, is uh, representing um, the, the aunties. The auntie is the one who controls the pot. <laughs> and then a wedding, she's the one who keeps the key. So you better be nice to her, if not, you don't get fed. Um, and my, my, my DJ is being very fashionable. Like I said, it comes in multiple colors. She's wearing the green patch. Somebody just makes made ponchos out of it. Si vini, c'est ce